I don't need medals or awards, Cortana. But it's symbolic. A celebration of something great in a time of war and doubt. Service and the respect of my fellow soldiers is all the reward I ask. Chief, Samuel L. Jackson is handing out the awards. I'll need a tux. The Halo series has been around for more than 20 years now. And like any franchise of video games that have been constantly getting releases for that long, the Halo series has undergone a lot of changes to its gameplay, narrative, and of course visuals. And to give a speech that he's been preparing all week. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Chief Petty Officer Spartan 117. <clears throat> Thanks. While the visuals of the oldest Halo games can still hold up fairly well, compared to most other games released around the same time, we cannot deny that it's gotten a lot better over the years. The history of Halo's graphics is one that spans from the 6th generation of consoles and will eventually include the current generation. In 2001, Halo Combat Evolved was released on Xbox and would quickly be known as one of the best launch titles of all time. It was the best occasion to show off the power and capability of the Xbox. The game was a graphical showcase for the console. The Blam engine, or the Halo engine as most artists refer to it, really made the Xbox ecosystem stand out with its highly detailed character models and environments, real-time reflections, and well-built shadows. Three short years after the first game was released, Halo 2 came out. While the Xbox World capabilities were at their limits at the time, Bungie Studios still had more than enough craft and experience to make a game that looked a lot better than its predecessor. This game would serve as the pinnacle of the Halo experience at that point, as it had everything that made the first game great, especially from a visual standpoint. The Halo engine was officially mastered by the Bungie Studio team. The physics and graphics were renovated, which allowed for several new techniques including shadow volume to become eventually a mainstream way of casting real-time shadows and in-game environments. We would find real-time reflections on armors and metal surfaces and ultimately add up to a way better looking game compared to the original Halo. Halo 3 followed up by getting released in a completely new hardware, so Bungie had a bit more time and flexibility to develop their graphics even more on the Xbox 360. The Halo 3 is based on a new platform of Xbox, so in the new generation we make the water surface animated. You can interact with it, you can sh you know throw things in the water and it creates ripples and it looks great. Water shader is pretty highly customizable. The artist can change the murkiness and you also can change the color of the water. You can change the transparency and the sharpness of the wave. The Halo engine was still being developed and upgraded. The thing that really paid off, with better lighting, depth of field effects, and a clean motion blur that added a lot when it comes to realism. While some of the techniques under the hood did require the game to render at a lower resolution than 720p, that was technically upscaled to 1080p by the Xbox 360, making it a very sharp looking game. The red spheres are active objects, meaning they're actually running animations, so they're going to take up a little more performance. The blue spheres are things that aren't running animations but are updating, and then the yellow spheres are things that are completely inactive, and so they're passed over very quickly in, when the game's processing. Now, let's jump to Halo 4, which was considered a landmark for the series for multiple reasons. Although it was developed by the same engine as all the previous Halo games, this game, Bungie was no longer responsible for developing the game because it was 343 Industries that took the project under their wing. The biggest changes were mainly visible by taking a totally different artistic vision rather than technical improvements, because after all, 2012 was the last year of the Xbox 360. The game felt like a Halo game overall, but it still had some dark tones to its visuals. 343 Industries were handed such a finely tuned playbook on how to make a Halo game that they were able to really stretch beyond what the Xbox 360 could offer, with global elimination, ambient act collusion, and image-based lighting that all basically added up to a very impressive illumination and shadow system that made most of the environments look like they belong to the next gen. The Halo engine is a very technical engineering focused engine. It's super hard for creatives to work in. And we did a ton of work on Halo 4 on the engine to get it to look as oh, good. It looks I think it looks amazing, amazing on for being it's on, done it. on the... You only do so much on that engine, and you have a team that is incredibly hard to do. So, one, we want to do more with Halo, and two, we want to have a team 
that can do their best creative work within our engine. So it really was taking the time off and as we announced the Slipspace engine last year, it is all to make sure that we're building the, the platform for the future of Halo. Halo Infinite, which is the latest entry of the saga, witnessed the biggest change of the series as it was made using a completely new game engine, which is the Slipspace engine. 343 Industries understood that the change in the engine was necessary to cope with the newest technologies that are available to use and render on both Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. The studio promised to deliver a visual stunner. It is true that the game engine obviously did not push the Xbox Series X to its full potential, and that is mainly because the game was cross-gen. Nevertheless, Halo Infinite offered a bold material look, which you can immediately distinguish on Master Chief's suit. Moreover, polygon count on characters have increased considerably. In addition, of course, we have finally the smooth 60 FPS update. It is very hard to see the Xbox One running a game with such visuals on 4K while maintaining 60 FPS, especially in an open world video game. We can definitely understand Halo Infinite was not the game to blow people's minds, or win awards or something like that. Yet, it is still delivers amazing 8th generation quality and performance that goes beyond the 8th gen console's capabilities. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. You can also check some of our previous videos similar to this one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.